And just so I know, I, um, will you be kind of directing and taking questions on? Because I can't see people. I can only see. Yes. yes I will. On. If you tell me when it will, I'll know when it's a question moment and then I can, I can take yeah. questions. That, that will be, that will be, yeah, cool. Um, cool. Okay. And um, we could have arranged this before. Are you going to introduce me or shall I just go for it? I introduce you. I will. That'd be lovely. Yay, can um, we'll do that. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Ooh. Someone else is just arriving. Um, my name is Louise and I'm the National Coordinator of NFS, National Food Service. Um, and I would like to introduce Tim from Cambridge Community Kitchen, who will be leading the session today. Thank you for coming. Cool. Thank you for that. Cool. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll have some interesting, useful stuff for you tonight. Um, well, I'm uh, Tim or Oakish. Uh, I go by Oakish at uh, the kitchen. Uh, he, him pronouns. And um, yeah, um, I'll be happy to take you through all this. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, what's the plan? What's the plan? Oh, the plan is to make this work. Here we go. Yeah, uh, the plan is a quick bit of background about what CCK is, what we do. Um, then onto the admin system proper um what are they how did we do them how do they work um how do they keep things ticking over um i've got three think three chunks of it that i want to show you tonight uh the dish of the day bit the uh from request to delivery so if somebody requests food and then it gets delivered to them what happens in between um and uh the volunteer rotors uh cause uh, yeah that's cool too um and then we'll have time for a discussion at the end um aiming for about an hour and a half altogether i think including all the discussion and there will be various points through uh throughout where i say okay any questions throw your questions at me um and uh, uh, that will be organized somehow. Right, good. Um, cool. So uh, let's crack on. Background. What is CCK? We are... Um, uh, do, do, do. What is CCK? We launched um, only just over a year ago, uh, November 2020, and at our first session, we served eight portions of food. Um, yay, we've grown a little since then. Um, we're now, uh, we're currently doing um, just uh, between 150 and 200 portions of food three times a week, every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Um, 200 portions of hot plant-based food, which we, um, which we uh, pot up and uh, most of the food is delivered. Um, um, some of it is collected from uh, from our base, but uh, most of what we cook is delivered to the people uh, who request it. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. We make food and we deliver it. Um, we have something like 700 registered volunteers, uh, people who have clicked the button and read, fill in the details and registered uh, to volunteer with us, um, of whom about, around about between 100 and 150 are currently active in some capacity. Um, that's a bit of an estimate, but, uh, but we do have a list of 700 names there. We have no owner, no staff, no managers, no legal structure, um, not even any full-time volunteers. Um, everything runs ad hoc. Um, when people are free to do stuff, they do stuff, and then they might drop out for a bit, and then they might come back. It's all ad hoc, but we're turning out a couple of hundred portions of food three times a week, and it keeps running. It's cool. Um, some people are obviously much more involved. Some people just turn up for the odd shift, and that's all, and that, that's that's the way it always is, of course. Um, but yeah, no, nobody's in charge, um, and uh, nobody's even full-time. It's a very, very flat uh, structure, um, we, which we like there. There we go. Um, it's an anarchist collective operating from a squat. Um, there's a pub in the center of Cambridge that closed down a couple of years ago. Um, a group of squatters moved in and kind of trashed the place and left it full of needles and fun stuff like that. Um, once they moved out, um, the current occupants or friends of the current occupants moved in and um, it was renamed The Lock-On. And uh, it's been The Lock-On for ooh, 18 months, a bit over 18 months. And um, it's, uh, it's doing rather well, and it hosts uh, Cambridge Community Kitchen three times a week. Yay! Um, it's possibly the only squat in the country that has a four-star hygiene rating in the kitchen. Yay! Um, that was quite an achievement. Um, we enjoyed that. Uh, we enjoyed the faces of the council inspectors who came round to inspect the, the squat in the 
kitchen in the squat. That was fun. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a four star hygiene rating. Yay. Maybe soon to be five. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, we, we were chuffed with that. Um, having the hygiene rating means that we can supply food to um, uh, various uh, shelters and so on around around the city who were pleased to see that we were doing what we were doing, but weren't allowed, weren't able to accept the food until we had the hygiene rating. So we have that. Uh, we ticked that box and now we can serve them. So that's CCK. Um, and uh, let's now go on to the admin systems. How, how does all that hang together? There must be something um, if it's all just completely ad hoc. Okay, so um, the what and the how. It's 90% Google Sheets. That's it. Google Sheets and some scripts that go with them. Um, there are a few thousand lines of Google um, Google scripts that go with this. Uh, most of which uh, I've, uh, I've created um, with so with some of it from other people as well. Um, but it's it's all there. It's all for free. It's um, it's just on a normal. Google account, not a, not a business one, not, not paid for. It's just a normal Gmail account um, with uh, some Google Sheets and some, and some scripts. Um, we have a few other paid services as well, like ClickSend, which allows us to send uh, text messages from the Google Sheets. Uh, Vercel.com is the platform where, we've, uh, where we deploy the uh, web app, which you'll be seeing in a little while. Keep your phone handy. We have a web app that the deliverers use. You'll be seeing that in a bit. Uh, we use GitHub and, and we have a website which involves some hosting and a, and a domain name and so on. Um, but the costs of all of those are minimal. Um, the vast majority of the functionality is Google Sheets, uh, which is free. Um, free, yeah, of course, if you're not paying for the service, then you are the product. I'm aware of that. Um, ideally, I would love to see a service that was as good as Google Sheets that allowed me to do everything Google Sheets does, but which wasn't linked to Google. That would be amazing. In the absence of that, on balance, um, Google Sheets does the job admirably and it's what we use. Uh, there we go, like it or not. It ain't perfect, but it does the job admirably. Um, the aim of what we're doing is smooth operation, as, as smooth as possible, um, with minimal admin input. Any time that somebody's having to repeatedly do the same thing over and over, copy and paste this thing from there to there, or send this message again and again and again, um, that's a waste of time. That's something that can be automated. And so that, that that's come up again and again and again as we um uh, as we've been creating the system and using it and tweaking it and so on. Um so smooth operation with minimal admin input. Stuff should just happen, should just work without having to be continually cajoled along uh, by either by me or any other uh, administrator. Um spreading the load as well. Um we don't want to have one or two key people who must be there or everything falls apart and nothing works. Um, it's got to work basically whoever's there. Now there's a certain amount of, of know-how that needs sharing around so that people know how to how different functions work and so on. Um, but it should be um, available and accessible from anywhere to anybody who's using it um, on any machine, any phone, um, as, as, uh, to, to as great a degree as possible. So we're spreading the load, um, uh, allowing different, more different people to take on admin roles um, and, and share, uh, share the load. Yeah. Um, but with data protection and GDPR obligations in mind, um, because, well, because it's important. Um, we a, a lot of the people that we serve are vulnerable people, uh, disabled people, and so on. And so um, we've got to respect their their. I mean, not just because they're vulnerable, but whoever the clients are, of course, we should be respecting their their, their privacy and uh, protecting their data. But it's even more important with vulnerable people. Um, so that's the key part of it as well. When we first started, um, everything was basically wide open, and anybody who'd ever done a delivery Every shift had access to all of the data about everybody who had, who had ever applied for a meal and it's like okay as a quick and dirty thing to get off the ground okay it works but you no know, no no not sustainable so so uh, that's now much much more locked down but in a way that in a way that doesn't get in the way there we go so the first of several times that you're going to see this slide any questions so far feel free to uh, i can't actually see you at the moment so um feel free to i can so i'll be looking out and um, feel free to pop questions in the chat at any point as they come up and i can mm. read them out or come to you 
Um, and then, yeah. So does anyone have a question right now? It doesn't look like anyone it does. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I just say it'd be really nice if people could just put the organisations there for all after their name, because we haven't done introductions or anything, just to, and we don't need to spend time on that, but that'd be good. Good suggestion. Very good I, idea, thank you. I like that. I haven't done that, but Cambridge Community Kitchen, it's, it's, it says in the corner, it says there. So uh, that, that, that's my, that's my organisation, <laughs> that's my affiliation. Thank, Thank you for that. Marianne. Cheers, Naomi. Okay, cool. So, um, admin system, that's what we're here to talk about. Um, I'm going to show you the dish of the day for. Um, where a, a typical uh, CCK session involves cooking a big old pot of um, something. Um, sometimes it's literally a one pot meal. Um, it's often a two pot meal, but the two pots will be one with carbs, either pasta or rice or something similar, and the other with some kind of uh, veggie sauce, some kind of dal, a uh, pasta sauce, a curry, something, something along those lines. Um, and um, when it's prepared, we have a dish of the day. What happens? So um, we have a form. It's just a Google form. Um, like you, I'm sure you've all seen Google forms before. Um, there's nothing special in that, but we have a system. Um, a few days before the shift, the team leader, gets an automatic email that looks like this. Dear Becca, I'm looking forward to seeing you for the kitchen, uh, in the kitchen for your upcoming shift as team leader. When you decided what you're going to cook, please fill in this form. And there's a link there. Um, that link takes them to the dish of the day form, um, which, uh, oh, and um, uh, sorry, and they also get uh, a text message during the shift itself. Hi, Becca, if you haven't already done the dish of the day form, fill it in as soon as you can. Here's the link again. There we go. So um, it's just a Google form. And it's pretty simple. It looks like this. It asks for a dish name. Um, it asks for the ingredients, type in the list of ingredients, and then any allergens. Uh, you can tick the, the relevant allergens that are, that are notifiable. And, uh, and that's it. Submit. OK, so, um, the, so the kitchen crew um, tell the system what we're cooking tonight. OK, it usually gets done during the session itself because a lot of the ingredients that we get are donated the kitchen crew might have a plan, but then they'll turn up and go, oh, and we've also got seven cabbages. Okay, well, that's cabbage, um, that kind of thing. So uh, there's, a, there's uh, quite a bit of, um, of uh, improvisation going on. So uh, the dish of the day form off, often happens during the shift, kind of towards the end of the shift, once, we, once we're sure what's actually gone into the pot. They fill in the form, they hit send, uh, they hit uh, submit. Okay, the first thing that happens is that information goes out to all the people who've requested food. Hi, Tom, just a quick message to let you know that the meal for today will be root veg pasta. It contains the following allergens, gluten, and so on. If you've got any uh, feedback, uh, hit the reply button, tell your friends, uh, see you soon, all at CCK. So that email goes out to um, as many of the recipients as we have uh, email, uh, as we have an email address for. Anyone that, um, so uh, they, they'll go out and uh, to all the different people um, with consent, we ask for their consent to send them that email. Well, most people opt into that. Um, anyone that you don't have an email address for gets the same thing uh, in a text message. Very much cut down, but today's dinner from CCK, root veg pasta, contains gluten, see you later. <laughs> it's uh, more succinct, but uh, it's the same message. And that goes out to by text message to people who we don't have an email address for, if we have a phone number for them. Um, we, uh, we can send text messages, but we do have to pay uh, like 2.7 pence, I think it is, uh, per message. So we use them, but if we can use an email, we, uh, we prefer to use that if we can. Um, it also goes out on Twitter. And all this, all this just happens as soon as the um, as soon as the the chef hits the send button, uh, the, the submit button on the form. This all just happens. Um, this goes out on Twitter tonight. We've prepared root veg pasta. We have requests for two hundred and eight portions today, including deliveries to sixty five people and families from around the city. If you'd like hot meals, uh, click the button. Um, and so those figures as well, the 208 portions and the 65 deliveries, that's pulled from the from the spreadsheet where where all the um, uh, where all that data is. And so that just gets tweeted um, automatically. Um, it also appears at the top of the delivery app so that the delivery volunteers know what they're delivering. And when they arrive, as well as, oh, super, what's for dinner tonight? They can say, oh, it's uh, it's root veg pasta. It contains gluten. Here you are. Here you are. Um, 
you'll be seeing that in a little while. Keep your smartphones ready, yay. Uh, but that's what it looks like. Um, and finally, again, just from the single submit button, the system also spits out a PDF uh, of an A4 page with labels containing all the same information, the dish name, the ingredients, the allergens, um, a use by date, and um, uh, yeah, so an A4, an A4 page of these, which we can then use to label the pots that we pass on to other organisations who, uh, who have a, you know, a fridge with uh, free food for people to take. Um, so yeah, all that happens immediately and saves a ton of time um, by just two minutes of input from the, uh, from the kitchen crew during the, during the shift. Um, so yeah, that's one little illustration of kind of tons of useful output from a minimal amount of input. And that's all just based on uh, Google Sheets and some Google scripts that make all those things happen. It's not that hard to do. It's fairly easy to, to replicate um, either by taking the whole thing and just copying it and using it, or possibly more likely um, taking useful bits of it and uh, recreating your own versions of them. Uh, but I've got, uh, I've got a certain amount of time and capacity to help people with that. So there we go. It's this slide again. Any of uh, any questions so far about? Um, there's one in yeah. me from Naomi. Uh -huh. um, would you like to go ahead and ask that, Naomi? Sorry. Sorry, I thought you were the me. I, I did send it to you, didn't I? I a few questions. Mm -hmm. Are only some of your ingredients donated food? Um, many of them are, but but yes, we do have uh, a small budget to buy stuff as well. Uh, we have a card for the local bookers. Um, we tend to buy lots of rice and pasta and onions, um, the the unglamorous things that don't get donated. We do get a lot of donated food, some from supermarkets, some from other local projects. Um, there's uh, there's a thing called Co Farm. Um, in Cambridge, where uh, they are growing several acres of um, uh, of fresh produce, uh, mostly there are a couple of paid people there who are the experts who know exactly what they're doing, and then a whole army of volunteers. They produce tons, literally tons and tons of veg, and give it away for free. And so we get some of that, uh, which is great. Um, there's a local organic uh, organic food uh, company who uh, do food boxes who also send yeah. send some vegetables. So from various sources. Is, uh, we do need to buy some, but lots of what we get is donated. Yeah, okay. Thanks. I've got two, three of us. I'll say them all together and then you can do all of them quickly. How do you, <laughs> how do you deliver? Um, do you use cars, vans, bikes, whatever? Um, can anyone at all request food is the second question. Mm -hmm. And the third question is how many volunteer cooks you have? Okay. Um, Delivery. one time, sorry. Sure. Uh, deliverers, um, we have we currently have nine different routes, so we need nine delivery volunteers uh, each for each session. Um, occasionally, we can merge merge them a little bit, get away with seven or eight volunteers. But in principle, nine delivery volunteers each time. Most people cycle. Um, it, it, typically, we'd have maybe seven bikes and a couple of cars um, of an evening. But all of the routes ha uh, are cyclable. Um, it's not unknown that we'll get nine cyclists who turn up to, to deliver. Um, we have delivery bags or equivalent um, that people have donated and uh, we kind of paint up and uh, either paint CCK logos or anarchist slogans on the side, that kind of thing. Um, it's fun. Um, so delivery by volunteers with a backpack uh, full of uh, hot food that they uh, that they deliver to um, seven, eight, nine, ten different addresses. Um, I'll show you more about that in a bit. Um, the ki a typical kitchen crew is, is usually four people uh team leader and three uh three cooks um and uh, so uh, on any given day there'll be four people there uh with a greater or lesser amount of experience um from a pool of uh, as i said approximately very roughly approximately 150 active volunteers at the moment some people cook some people deliver some do both some do cleaning um some do admin some do a mixture of all sorts of things and uh, what was the question sorry i think i've missed one of them uh, oh, sorry, about delivery. Can, can yeah. anyone at all request food? Oh, yeah. 
yeah there's uh, there's no there's no checks there's no gatekeeping at all uh in order to qualify and we we have a geographical area that with the we can't you know, we can't we can't send cyclists off you know 20 miles away to deliver food so we have a, a, a cb1 to cb5 is the geographical area that we cover those five postcode districts but um uh if you're within those then uh, yes we will bring you food if you request it um Oh, Nicole, do you have your questions? Hi, yeah. Um, I hey. had two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one was how, uh, maybe we'll cover this in the next section actually, but I was wondering how do people request food? Is it just from an online form? Uh, coming up. Um, essentially, it's an online form, yes, but we now have a phone number as well, so people can yeah. call up and say, oh, I'd like some food, and we can call them back, and basically we'd fill in the form on their behalf to get the data into the system. Okay. And second question, um, for like the automated text that you're doing, mm -hmm. um, does that just go through Google Sheets or is there another program that you're using in conjunction to send out that, text? Uh, that goes through clicksend.com. Okay, um, nice. who, okay. yeah, uh, one of many companies that do online SMS, but they seem to be very friendly and helpful um, on the support side. Uh, they've given us a discounted price on the basis that we're doing good stuff and, um, and the service seems to work is good. So uh, yeah, clicksend.com. Uh, other, other providers are available, but that works for us. Um, and uh, they have an email to SMS gateway. So basically our text messages are simply Gmail messages that we send to ClickSend and then they send them on from our mobile number as a text message and then replies, so, come, replies come back to our mobile. To our mobile. So your Google Sheets links to your, to send out like an automated Gmail, which goes through. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. right. thank you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or should uh, Seb to? is next. Although Naomi's put a quick one in the chat, which was, what was the cost of a text message? From that memory, it's 2.7 pence uh, per message, I think. Uh, very close to that figure, it might be 2.78 or it might be 2.8, uh, 2.78 pence, I think, I think. <laughs> uh, I can check that, uh, but there we go. Um, sorry, I've just thought of a couple of others as well. How, how many times do you cook? Three times a week, every Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, and Sunday. For how long? For how sorry, long? Sorry to be so. It's just no, no, yeah. Um, the kitchen shift starts at three. Um, we aim to have the food ready for six. So it'll start potting up around six o'clock. Um, and uh, from six to maybe 20, 25 past six, we'll be scooping out, uh, scooping food out into pots um, and labeling any gluten free or different, uh, different variations that people have asked for and loading up into bags uh, according to the delivery sheets that we've got, which I'm going to show you shortly. Um, and the deliverers tend to start from about half past six. So, okay, so, so it's all hot food. Yes. And when you say food, it's meals. It's a meal, yeah. yeah. Um, in a, yeah. a microwaveable container type thing, or in a like? yeah, um, in a cardboard, uh, uh, you know, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream, that kind of cardboard, that size of cardboard pot with a lid. Um, so uh, I, I should have brought props. Damn it, uh, <laughs> one of those. Uh, yeah, uh, brown cardboard, recyclable. Um, oh, no, no, not recyclable, compostable. Um, uh, pot. There we go. So you produce one hundred and fifty to two hundred. Yep over those three uh, th no, um, each, on, on each occasion on each occasion on each yes. of the three times yeah yeah okay yeah cool. sorry so yeah that. so 500 600 portions a week yeah yeah cool okay um Seb next, I yeah hi there um <laughs> yeah uh i'm here basically well uh not directly for food provision but um i'm at part of a, an organization that is you know very reliant on uh, volunteers and coordination mm -hmm. as well so i'm i'm right. here more for the tech side than the, cool. the actual product delivery but um, right. yeah mm -hmm. um uh, and on that um i may be jumping the gun here but um, mm -hmm. you've spoken a little bit <laughs> <Go> around <ahead. laughs> um how you uh you know the the, the four people um on each shift uh, that's mm -hmm. sort of done automatically um but so i guess yeah two two parts of the question um sort of uh how do you know i imagine people volunteer to be team leaders and take up the other roles and things like that um what uh sort of um approval process if any do you have to say 
you know, like this person is actually capable of leading the team or taking on the other roles, et cetera, that they, the kitchen might need. Um, okay. And actually, I've forgotten the second part, so let's just go with that. <laughs> I'll go with that. All right, okay, I'll answer that one. Uh, keep thinking. Um, for the kitchen roles, uh, we ask people when they sign up, um, uh, what roles are you interested in? So uh, is it cleaning? Is it uh, cooking? Is it delivering? Is it admin? Um, people can say yes or no to as many of those as they want. Some people just want to cook. That's cool. Some people just want to sit on the computer and do the admin, and that's cool too. Um, so uh, some people do do more than one role. Uh, uh, for the kitchen specifically, um, anyone can put the name down as a cook. And um, essentially, if you can, if you can chop an onion, you, you're good. You're qualified. Um, th- uh, um most most of the work there involves uh, just chopping veg chop 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 um so um if you can do that you're good and if you can't do that you're probably not going to volunteer for a shift in a kitchen um so uh i mean maybe some maybe some people might be learning how to chop an onion on the go on the go why not you know everybody did learn some time you know i remember learning how to chop an onion it was a few quite a few years ago um so you know we're happy to help people you know happy to help people uh, upskill as we go along that's cool um but uh, uh da, 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 what was i gonna say um for delivering uh, oh sorry right uh, sorry before we go to the deliveries for the team leader in the kitchen um uh we didn't always have team leaders but we found it kind of evolved into that anyway so we thought it, we might as well uh, make it an actual role basically there'll be one person there who's done it a number of times before who has an idea about the quantities we're going to need how long it's going to take for this pot of water to boil it's always longer than you think and just has an has an idea of what's going on and has a plan and is responsible for making sure it all happens and can say okay here's a massive bowl of onions could you chop those please you've got some carrots okay give those a wash and and peel them please could you do that you do that and just you know just generally um make sure everything happens as it's needed um so uh, so it's not an entirely flat organization we have the team leader in the kitchen um for the deliverers uh basically the qualification is can you ride a bike um or drive a car ta-da you could um i suppose read a map minimally excuse me um but uh yeah that's uh, that's basically it people who enjoy a, a bike ride around the city of an evening uh turn up and do that and uh, and yeah some people in cars sometimes on the longer routes but um yeah uh there's um we don't require very much in terms of uh prior experience and and we're happy to help people learn stuff as they go along um many of the team leaders uh, so um we do training shifts sometimes where people come into the kitchen and um, it's specifically a shift where the person in charge will not just be guiding the shift but also um, thinking out loud and sharing what they're doing at each stage um, to train up the people, you know, explaining why we're, why we're doing this extra part of this. It's because we've got 10 portions that we need no tomato, so we need something separate. And, and you know, and thinking through the process of, uh, of make, uh, making, making it all happen. Um, so uh, on the job training for team leaders and when people have done that and the confidence they get they get added to the 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 list of uh, known known approved team leaders um and we're going to see that shortly as well uh, that's um if somebody volunteers as a team leader and they're not on that list they're not a, an already known team leader that gets kind of flagged up um to the admin to, to the people involved in the admin so that we can kind of ask do, do we know this but can they actually do this do they know what they, we could maybe ask them maybe swap them to you know so we can check it before before things go pear-shaped um we're going to see a little bit of that shortly uh does that mostly answer the question uh yes although i did suddenly remember the second part as Go well um, <laughs> yeah uh sort of how would you describe your volunteer base in terms of comfort with using this technology like uh, what you've shown so far is mostly you know if they can just use an email or a smartphone that seems comfortable um mm-hmm. but again personally my volunteer base has incredibly different levels of access to technology and comfort with pretty much anything so right, uh, yeah. you know if you've got any um uh, tips or uh, ways around that that would be helpful too yeah um the, there's always there's always a variety of, of levels of, of comfort and ease with, uh, with with any kind of tech my one of my aims all the way through has been to make it absolutely as simple and obvious and quick 
as possible. Any interaction that a volunteer needs to make with the system should be obvious as soon as they open the document and over in as few clicks as possible. And if I can tweak the system to make it three clicks instead of five, I will spend time doing that so that it is. Um, and uh, that kind of, that principle has been applied all the way through. Um, and and I, I think that helps. It's not perfect. Um, we rely a lot on Google Sheets um, for many things. Uh, all the rotors, each rotor is a public Google Sheet and people stick their names in the cells. There's more to it, I'm gonna show you in a bit, but um, it's a Google Sheet. Google Sheets don't work brilliantly well on mobile phones. Um, so there is an argument that, say, that says all of this will be much more elegantly done uh, on a, uh, some kind of database with a, a you know, business layer in, in whatever, you know, in your preferred language and, um, and a web front end to it. And that's right. Um, that's not what I know how to program. I know how to describe it. Um, if you're a web programmer, hey, maybe we can do a project together. But um, th uh, there would be advantages of the kind that you're talking about in terms of accessibility to people who are a bit hazy on, on tech um, to, make it, uh, um, to make it accessible via any browser rather than having to load a, a Google Sheet onto a phone. It works. Um, sometimes people just send a message going, put me on on Thursday, would you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go. You're down on Thursday. I'll see you later. Um, we have discussion, you know, uh, chat groups as well going on alongside all the, um, all the spreadsheets. So um, that works too. Um, uh, and we also have, uh, as I mentioned, we have a phone number now as well. For a long time to request food, you, you had to fill in a Google form. And uh, there are people who just don't have access to a device that will allow them to fill in a Google form. So, um, of course, there are. So we now have a phone number as well to make it more accessible to more people. Um, and, and that helps. We, you know, we get voicemails on there uh, requesting food and we can call them back and so, yeah. There we go. Hopefully that covers that. So, yeah, that was brilliant. Thank you very much. Cool. Cheers, sir. Thank you. So let's crack on then. Um, I want to show you the next Do you mind bit. just asking, answering oh. my question? Sorry. Uh, oh, go, go on, anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, you might have said this already. Roughly how many houses are the 600-ish portions delivered to? How many addresses? Um, typically between 60 and 70. 60 to 70 addresses. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, um, we'll see that shortly. Um, okay, cool. So from request to delivery, what happens when somebody hits the uh, request food button? Um, and what happens behind the scenes to go from that to food turning up on the doorstep? Here we go. So this is the front page of our website. This is almost all of the website, but um, there we go. Three key buttons. We've got, uh, if you want to volunteer, click this. If you'd like some food, click this. Or if you want to give us some money, click this. That's the, that's the, the meat of the website. Um, if somebody goes for the request meals button, they land on a Google form. You'll be shocked to hear. Um, it describes what we do uh, as briefly as possible and asks for the minimal amount of information for us to be able to provide that service. So, um, key thing obviously is where we're going to deliver to. Um, we ask for name, contact details, how many portions you want and so on. But the key thing is where. Now it says delivery address. It doesn't have to be an address. We had a client for a while who lived in a tent on the common. We delivered to him. Um, we, uh, we've had, uh, well, uh, this client that I'm about to show you uh, lives on a houseboat or done floating. There we go. Um, and uh, we delivered to him. We've, we've had clients on, on uh, boats on the cam as well. Um, and uh, there we go. So they fill in the form, they submit it. And of course, it lands in uh, a Google spreadsheet. I'm sure you've all seen this kind of thing before. This is all fictional data, by the way, I should say. My GDPR hat on. Um, randomly generated names and email addresses and phone numbers. These are actually genuine addresses that exist in Cambridge, but they're just a result of me throwing a dart at a map. They're nothing to do with anybody who's ever used CTK settings. I just thought I'd mention that. So, um, so our new client and uh, gets added to the uh, to the list of names. This is Jeff. Uh, he's got a phone. He doesn't have an email address. He'd like deliveries to his houseboat that's called Dun Floating um, that's moored between Jesus Green Play Area and the Victoria Bridge. So we need to be able to put that into the app for the deliverers so that they know where to go. 
we head over to Google Maps, we find Jesus Green Play Area, we find the Victoria Avenue Bridge, and we stick a pin in the map in between the two. So it's going to be somewhere along here. The, that's not very much of a stretch of river. It will be easy enough to find a houseboat moored there. And we copy the plus code, which Google supplies us with. Plus code, uh, a plus code is a way of encoding the latitude and longitude of that point on the map. Um, it gives a very precise indication of a point on the Earth to within a few meters. Um, you might have heard of what three words that uh, purport to do a similar thing. Um, they do after a fashion, but um, <laughs> but they're evil litigious bastards and uh, with an inferior product. Um, friends don't let friends use what three words. Tell your friends. OK, so we use plus codes, which were created by the Borg Google, but then immediately released for free, open sourced uh, to the world uh, to use for any purpose at all. They're not unique to Google. They are uh, free and openly available. Uh, the algorithm to create them and to decode them is, uh, is freely available to anybody who wants to use them for any purpose. So there we go. But they do also work with Google Maps. So there we go. We have have this plus code which indicates this point on the river. Um, we copy the plus code from here and we paste it into the spreadsheet um, that we saw a moment ago. And then we go to our map that shows all of our deliveries. And each of these colors, each of the colored clusters is a route. So there'll be somebody that will come down and visit all these and then go back to base. And somebody else will go out and visit all of these orange ones here and go back to base. This is a slightly different orange. The colours are not, not quite as contrasty as they might be. But yes, um, this here is another cluster. So somebody cycles out along New Market Road and goes and does all those. We've got the clusters. Uh, the, so each cluster of uh, coloured uh, points in the map is a different route. And the bit we were just looking at uh, the green and the bridge and the river, it's just here. So it's its going to be on this route. We just kind of do that by eye. This is a couple of manual steps that need to be done to, to, to process the new request for food. And, um, and so we're going to add it to this uh, ready maroon uh, route, which happens to be the Chesterton route. So back on our spreadsheet, we've copied and pasted the plus code into here. We've, uh, we're going to choose Chesterton from this drop down list. He's going to be added to the Chesterton route. Um, and then from our extra little menu, the CCK menu that appears at the top of the page, we choose optimize and recalculate routes. And that happens. Um, we use the Google Maps API to say, here's a bunch of addresses. We're going to start from the lock on, come back to the lock on and visit all of these eight addresses in Chesterton, what's the quickest way to do it? And it takes about 10 seconds to do them all. Google comes back and tells us, um, here we go. We've got these eight, route, uh, eight stops on the Chesterton route currently, and it's put Jeff in actually at the, at the top of the list. Um, he's, uh, so he'll be the first stop on that route. But the, the optimal route to visit all of those addresses in order is calculated for us by Google uh, by a script that I wrote. Um, so, uh, th so there's those couple of manual steps that need doing when somebody new signs up. Find a plus code, assign them to one of the existing routes, and then hit sort. And we're there. As soon as that exists, the system spits out nine route sheets, printable A4 route sheets. We're going to look at one now. It looks like this. So this is the Chesterton root sheet. It's got Jeff up at the top there. He's appeared on it already. Nobody had to add him to the list. He, uh, his data was in the system, and so it pops out on the root sheet. Uh, Jeff's here. We've got his houseboat. We've got the plus code. Um, he wants one portion on Tuesday, one on Thursdays, one on Sundays. He'd like us to bring cutlery. We can do that. Um, and he says, please don't leave food if he's not home. Um, sometimes people don't want food every time. So uh, Fania here doesn't want food on a, on a Tuesday. This person here is greyed out because they have a zero on Thursday. And this is the passcode for today. This is, this is today's sheet. It's, it's the, ah, oh, oops, sorry, that one. Here we go. Yeah. Um, uh, it's Thursday today, so there's a zero here and a zero here, so they get greyed out. We're, we're not going to see them tonight. Um, this route is going to be done tonight by Jemmy um, on his bike. Again, that just appears because Jemmy put his own name on the delivery rotor 
for the for the Chesterton route tonight, and so that just appears on the printable route sheet. Um, plus cutlery appears down here in big letters, so that the person who's packing the bags knows they need to drop some cutlery into this bag because simply because the word cutlery appears somewhere in these notes. <laughs> if anybody mentions cutlery, it comes up in huge letters down here to help the person packing the bags. And we've got ten here just in big letters uh, because um, it's ten portions tonight. It's Thursday. On Sunday, it will say eleven here. Um, um, and there's a. Oh, I've done it again. I've clicked the wrong thing. Here we go. There's a QR code. If you've got your phone handy, give it a scan. Pull out your phone. We're going to stop on this for a few minutes. Pull out your phone now, and scan the QR code. It should scan off your screen. If it doesn't scan for whatever reason, you can go to demo.cckitchen.uk and enter the passcode JKFR. But that QR code will do that for you. And, you know, I, I'm a scan it myself. <laughs> so I can hold up my phone and show you show you what you're meant to be seeing. Here we go. Da, da, da. There we go. Scanned immediately. And it takes about 10 seconds to connect. Ah, that's exciting. It works better with an internet connection. Come on. Oh, don't go wrong on me now. I like tested this earlier and it worked. <laughs> no! This is why most of what we're looking at tonight is screenshots and slides and not live demonstrations. Because, oh, that's really irritating. I was kind of hoping. It's loaded for me, but it's not Has working it? when I put the password in. So yeah. it's asking for the passcode, I put JKFR, oh, oh. and then it's uh, not. Try refreshing the page, actually. Okay. Um, uh, if it's asking you for the passcode and you've done it from the from the QR code, it's gone wrong already. The QR okay. code oh. includes the passcode, and it should just bypass that. You should <laughs> land. No worries, I'll try again. No, no, try it. Uh, uh, it is now connecting for me. Um, Come on. Um, but yeah, this is uh, hopefully what you're going to see. I'm going to show you some pictures of it anyway, but hopefully what you're going to see is the app that, or the web app that uh, our delivery riders have. And each pin in the map is placed there. It depends on the plus code that you see here, not on the address itself. So um, when we when a new person signs up and we search for these plus codes we do put a bit of effort into making sure we have exactly the right house where's the front door to this house where's the entrance to this apartment building oh wait this apartment building has eight entrances depending on which which flat number it is so we check which ones are which and uh, we, we look on detailed maps and we stick a pin in exactly the place where the delivery needs to go to, which can save like several minutes of, of messing about each time uh, each time somebody has to go there. Um, so uh, yeah, so we so we plus codes for that. Um, and I am disappointed with uh, with this app, which is not doing what it should do. At least for me, it um, worked the second time for me. Okay, cool. I'm glad. So you can see the app. You can see the list of names. The yeah. National names. Cool. And so um, could you hold your phone up to the screen to your camera so we can see it? Uh, well, the, the camera quality is so poor. Uh, all right. <laughs> see it how this go. goes. Um, OK. Oh, no, but we can, it looks all right. Yeah, we can see. So at the top of the screen there, it's showing us the Chesterton route. We can see the... Um, uh, we can see the, uh, the dish of the day, the root veg pasta, because that was submitted by the kitchen team earlier. And we've got Jeff there, who we've just added. There's a Google Maps button and a call button. So we can call him if he's given us a phone number. Jeff has. It's fictional, obviously. Don't, pre don't press call on any of these. I've made up all the phone numbers, but they might connect to somebody. Who knows? Um, there's a call button, so we can call the, uh, the, the person who's expecting the food. There's the Google Maps button, which just jumps over to, the, uh, to Google Maps and gives you directions to the door, to the precise location that we've shown and when you've done that one you can tick it it disappears and uh, we get the next one um cool thanks for that Seb. <laughs> i'm glad it worked for you uh i'm ashamed to say it's still trying to load on my phone it's like, oh i tested this earlier anyway um tech never works when you need it to but but uh, I, I, sh I should say it nearly always works um when the riders are out we've had 
maybe two or three sessions where um, it was suddenly a bit chaotic because the app just stopped working. And like, oh god, oh no! Now I've got to look at the paper, and, and I, I can't read the paper because it's dark. Ah, what? Oh, it's smudged. What does this say? And yeah, so that took a bit longer. But generally, generally, um, it has proved to be uh, very reliable. Um, we're actually using a separate app, a parallel one. Uh, the, the demo bit in the URL shows you. It's a, a, this is a demo app which we've uh, put together in the last few days and doesn't seem to be working as well as I'd hoped. Anyway, that's what it does. So each delivery rider who turns up gets a paper sheet like the one on the screen right now. They can they can work from that. And they don't actually need the phone at all, but it's much quicker and easier for the vast majority to scan that code, get the list on the, uh, on, the on the screen and um, follow the Google directions to get them to where they're going. There we go. That's um, so from request for food through the system to deliver it turns up at your door. Any uh, questions from the first there? question we have is from Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, Mark? You Mark? Are it? you there? Well, I can read it. Um, and it was uh, how do you get the routes optimized? Um, we um, we choose who's going to be in which cluster simply by eye. We look at what we've got. Um, it's near to those, but actually there's not many on that route. There's quite a lot on that one. So we're going to shift a couple of them onto that route for now. We'll see how that goes. So that's just done purely by eye, just by looking at colored pins in a map um, to get the optimal route. What Once we've decided that these eight addresses are going to be a route, um, how do we get the optimal route? Google. Um, I showed uh, one second, uh, I'll just step back through this. Um, this is built into our spreadsheet now um, using some scripts that I wrote, um, optimize and recalculate routes. You choose that and it takes about 10 seconds and all of the routes are optimized to, to appear in the optimal order for a cyclist who's leaving from our base uh, visiting that list of eight addresses or however many it is and going back to the base. Um, and uh, it's, it's done on the basis of cyclists. A possible evolution that I might get around to doing at some point would be to look at whether somebody says they're good turning up in a bike or in a car and uh, passing that to Google because the optimum route for a driver is not necessarily anything like the optimal route for a, for a cyclist. There are all sorts of uh, one-way streets and dead ends for cars that bikes can go through and things in Cambridge. Uh, so, um, and Google can, can give both. Uh, but uh, the answer to your question, how do we get the optimal routes through the Google script that I wrote that does it in uh, a few seconds. There we go. Um, Mark has a follow up question. He uh, asks uh -huh. if you implemented your own algorithm in a custom script or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all the automatic functionality that I'm showing you here depends on a few thousand lines of Google Script, uh, it's essentially JavaScript. It's based on JavaScript, but it's, it's Google's version of JavaScript that comes with uh, Google Sheets um, and uh, yeah, makes all of this stuff happen. Yeah, um, it's custom scripts that uh, as I say, uh, mostly, uh, mostly written by me uh, with some input from a few other people as well. And the um, reason we're here is to share this stuff. If you want some of this, talk to me. I'll be very happy to uh, just just send you all the code or uh, talk you through how it works, and uh, so you can implement your what you know, a similar thing around your needs, that kind of thing. Talk to me. Um, Nicole, do you want to ask your questions next? Um, yeah, I just wanted um, first to clarify something. Um, mm -hmm. So for the just to clarify the manual steps. So for every Buddy that signs up, like every new person that signs up, you're yep. find, looking at their address in Google, you're like looking at their address in Google Maps and you're finding mm -hmm. the plus code and then you're putting that in the spreadsheet yourself yep. for everybody. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you are putting them in a grouping, like a delivery Correct. group yep. yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then what the Google Sheets does is that it optimizes the order for each delivery group. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. yep. Correct. Are there any other manual steps or is that is that right? 
that's basically it um okay. for uh for processing a new request for food yep yeah, that's that's basically it um occasionally we get an address that we can't really understand we're not sure what it means so we have to contact them and so uh, obviously things like that um and um sometimes uh we, we have several different maps that we use google maps is obviously uh, a good place to start open street map um, has massively more detail about house numbers and entrances to buildings and which entrances for which apartment numbers, that kind of thing. So openstreetmap.org um, is super useful for that. Um, we use that a lot. Um, and, and, and also, if you go on the planning portal of your local authority, um, they always have super detailed maps that show the outline of every building and the numbers of the houses and so on, which can occasionally be useful. It's a bit cheeky, but, uh, but it works. There we go. Um, there's that too. Well, thank you. And um, my other question was, I'm just wondering how people, like when they, I guess when they request food, mm -hmm. Are they just requesting for that week? Do they have to request each week, or how does like how do you repeat deliveries work? We, we assume that people want uh, want to sign up as uh, for deliveries for a while. So um, the question on the form is how many portions would you like on Tuesdays, how many on Thursdays, and how many on Sundays? And occasionally somebody says, "I just need it now and on Sunday," and that's the lot. So that's what we do. Um, uh, we uh, also in the form is. Um, if you if you know that you want the deliveries to stop on a certain date, you can tell us that. And when that date passes, their line gets highlighted in the in the spreadsheet that says, oh, you know, this person said they didn't want food anymore. Usually we contact the people at that point and say, you know, when you first signed up, you said that you wouldn't want food after today. We'd still be happy to provide it if you want it. What would you like to do? And, you know, sometimes they cancel, sometimes they don't. Um, so if people call you and say they don't need the deliveries anymore, you just you just take them off the sheet like that's the way it would work they would just contact uh, yeah you. yeah when someone says uh, you know thanks for the help but i don't, uh, don't need it anymore at the moment um yeah. we uh, we take them we take them off the route that they're on um so they they drop off the 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 active part of the spreadsheet but we keep the details around for a little while um uh, partly a you know, kind of safeguarding thing uh, uh um, so we know who we have been serving in case of any major problem. And also just because sometimes people come back and say, actually, sorry, could I start again? And if we've thrown away all the details, we have to get them all again. So, uh, so yeah, we keep the details around for usually a month or two and then we do. And my last question, sorry. Um, yeah, the app that you showed, is that, so that's just a web-based app? It's not- Yes, like there's nothing to install. It's, it's just a web page, but it feels like an app when you use it. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, uh, so yeah, there's, there's nothing to download and install from the Google Play Store or whatever. No, no, uh, it's, it's just a web page. Um, so How, did you have to, did you have to pay for that then? Um, we don't strictly have to. It would be possible to deploy um, without paying, but just for ease of use and ease of updating, um, we uh, we use vercel.com, V-E-R-C-E-L, um, vercel.com. Uh, actually, it's someone who was working with us who already had a Vercel account, so I think it's actually on there, so it's not costing the kitchen anything, I think. But um, they, for a, a sum of money per month, not a huge amount, um, they automatically deploy uh, the app every time that we update anything in GitHub. So, um, for example, at the moment, um, we've had cases of COVID in the in the lock on in the squat where we're based. And so we've had to stop using the kitchen there temporarily until the COVID's all, all sorted. Um, so we're currently being hosted by uh, St. Andrew Street Baptist Church in Cambridge. Yay, thank you for them. Um, they're cool. Um, they're uh, hosting us in their, their much grander kitchen. He's like, oh my God, um, which is cool. Uh, we're very grateful for that. But um, in in the app at the bottom of the screen if you still got it open you can see it now there's a button that says back to the lock on you hit that button and it gives you a route back to the base it's a useful thing when you've visited when you visited the last address and you're not exactly sure where you are in Cambridge it gets you back home um when we when we shifted to St Andrew Street Baptist Church I changed that button in the app so that instead of saying back to the lock on it says back to the church and and it takes you obviously to to that plus code instead of that plus code so um, I changed I changed that in the code. Um, I pushed that to GitHub and uh, Vercel immediately deployed that and it was live in seconds without me having to do anything else. So just for that convenience, 
uh, we've got uh, we've got Vercel doing that for us. Um, it makes things easy. There we go. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so if that's all the questions for now, I'm going to show you one more chunk of the system, um, and then it'll be discussion time. So volunteer rotors. Uh, we have this army of volunteers, and we don't have anybody contacting them saying, oh, are you free on What days would you like to work or whatever? Basically, if you want to work, you put your name on a rotor. Uh, we have a cooking rotor, we have a cleaning rotor, we have a delivery rotor. And each one is a Google spreadsheet, you'll be shocked to hear, um, a publicly editable Google spreadsheet, um, albeit possibly not like you've seen before. This is the cooking rotor. It's one of the three that we have, but um, it's uh, similar in format to, to the others. Um, we got dates down the side. Uh, we need a team leader on each date. We need cooked one, two, and three, and it's handy to have a reserve sometimes too. Um, and people simply stick their names in here. These are all fictional names, by the way. I keep I mentioned that before, but I'll say it again. Um, so uh, people come along here. If I wanted to work in here, I could just click in there and type Oakish in the cell. And uh, that's me scheduled to work on Tuesday, February the 1st uh, as cook number three on that day. And, um, and that's it. Um, a few days before the shift, um, the system will send an email to everybody on that date and say, hey, just a quick remind, you know, just a heads up, uh, just to remind you that you're you're booked uh, to do a cooking shift from 3 p.m. on Tuesday, the 1st of February. Um, if for any reason you can't make it, let us know as soon as you can so we can find a replacement. Um, but uh, so that happens automatically simply on the basis of my name being on there. Because in another Google spreadsheet, we have my registration as a as a um, volunteer that said I was interested in cooking and interested in delivering and interested in admin. And this is my phone number, this is my email address and so on. So the system can ping me reminders like that. This week is highlighted in blue at the top. Um, the previous session is still there in gray, it's still visible. So we can contact Mary or one of the others and say, hey, um, is, are there any, um, is there any pasta left in the kitchen? And she can say, oh, yeah, but probably not enough for a full meal. You'll have to go to Booker's and get some more. Um, so it's useful to see who was there last. But every couple of days, the top row gets deleted automatically. Everything else shifts up. And the top row gets deleted, but also copied to an archive. So we have a private archive of the whole history of all the rotors, of the cooking rotor, the cleaning rotor, and the delivery rotor. Um, but the, the public version that you see here um, always starts from around today. The last one or two sessions will be visible in grey and we've got today, the next ones, and then all the others in the future. And if you want to sign up, you know, every Sunday from now until now until the end of March, you can just put your name in as many times as you like. Um, that's the rotor. That's how it works. Um, but on the basis of things being on there, automated things can happen, reminders can be sent. Um, we saw on the delivery sheet that he said, Jemmy, bike in the corner. That was simply because Jemmy had put their name for the Chesterton route for today on the delivery rotor. And that just appears on the, uh, on the printable uh, route sheet. So the person packing the bags knows who to give that bag to. Um, we can see here, Jamie, Put, put the name in here and they've been flagged. They're in gray and there's a little comment in the corner that says not yet registered as a volunteer. The system doesn't recognize the name Jamie. We don't know who Jamie is. Now, if we've no indication at all, we might just have to delete Jamie or see if somebody called Jamie turns up. Um, usually people also join the chat groups and Jamie might pop up in a chat group and say, hey, I've, you know, uh, I've just signed up for Sunday the 6th of February. And we say, oh, you don't seem to have filled in the registration form. Could you do that, please? And then we know who you are and how to contact you and so on. Um, so people who are unrecognized get flagged like that by the system. Um, the system also locks all the cells that we don't want people to touch anymore. So if you try and write your name in this cell here, you can write your name in it. If you try and delete Ros from here and put your own name in instead, it won't let you. Um, once a cell's got something in it, then it gets locked. And um, if somebody wants to actually remove themselves, they ping a message in the chat and say, hey, uh, sorry, I can't make it on Sunday the 30th of January anymore. Could you take me off? Oh, one of the admin teams says, yeah, sure. But 
by doing it, by doing that, um, I think I think we avoid um, problems of uh, people even accidentally um, deleting things or changing things that that, that they shouldn't. Um, as Seb suggested earlier, the level of technical ability and competence uh, varies widely, and um, that measure of locking cells once they've got something in them is uh, is intended to uh, to balance uh, to, to, to yeah how can I put this uh, gently um, to stop people unintentionally um, making a mess of our rotors and even things like if somebody changes the font or the type cell or changes the width of the column every hour another script comes by and just puts it back how it should be um, so uh, so it's always going to find its way back to how it, how it should be all the time there we go so there's that um, that's the public cooking rotor that's what people see when they uh, uh, when they when they want to sign up for a for a for a shift. They put the name down in here, and uh, and that's what the public sees. There's also a private version of this for the admin team, which has extra functionality built into it, and it looks like this. Now, we don't have to kind of keep this up to date. This this mirrors whatever's on the public one, but it gives us extra information about what's going on. So we can see on Thursday shift, we've got uh, Dora Lynn as the team leader, and she's got a tick in the approved column. She's on the list of people that we know have done the job before, and, and, and we're, we're happy to have Dora Lynn as a team leader. Well, with her, we've got Noli, who's only done one shift before, Sibel, who hasn't done any yet, but Maureen, who's done three. So that's a good team. That'll work. On Sunday, we've got Noli, who's only done one shift before, and she's put herself in as the team leader. She's not yet on the list of people that we've trained as a team leader. That's not necessarily catastrophic. She might be amazing, but we're going to check. That uh, that gets flagged up, and we can check with her and say, "Hey, you know, just, just kind of sound them out and see." You. And sometimes it's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I've um, I've cooked in, you know, I've been cooking all my life uh, for for um, larger numbers of people from this on a on a budget of sixpence, and yes, I can do this." And they come in and they do an amazing job. Um, other times it's like, "Oh God, did I put myself in the team lead? Oh no, 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 take me out of that." So, um, so there we go. That gets flagged. Um, on, uh, on this one here, we've got uh, Sibel. Now, Sibel hasn't done any shifts yet. She, she's a blank shift count here, but she is on the team lead. She's got a tick here. She is on the team leader thing. So Sibel clearly knows her onions. She knows what she's doing. Um, she's learnt it elsewhere, and she's bringing her experience to, to our kitchen. Yay! On her shift, this is highlighted in, this has come up in red because nobody here has more than one shift. Thea doesn't have any, Ross has one, and we don't have anybody else yet. Now, let's say Maureen were to sign up here, that would turn the red green again, because we've got somebody with a few shifts under the belt, that'll do, they'll, they'll get through. But if we've got a whole shift, um, or uh, well, everyone except the team leader, who's essentially new, has either never done a shift or only done one shift, that also gets flagged. Again, it's not necessarily catastrophic. That would probably work, but we're going to mention it to the team leader. Hey, you've got a fairly inexperienced team. Is that okay with you? And we'll probably mention it to the to the other to the participants as well, and say, you know, uh, there'll be three of you there who don't really know you way around the kitchen. Would you prefer to maybe come a different date with some more experienced people? So we get that extra insight from. Again, this is all just from scripts that are built into the that, that I've written that are uh, now part of this spreadsheet. That um, that give us these insights based on the data that we've got. There we go. So there's that. Um, it's, it's information dense, um, but it's not as information dense as this. Ah, um, this is the list of all of our cooks. Again, fictional names, fictional data, but um, this is the list of all, the, the all cooks list. We have a very similar looking list called all cleaners and another one called all deliverers. Um, what have we got in here? Um, the darker highlights, show us the experienced people, people with at least five shifts. So the, the, the more shifts you do up to five, um, the darker your highlight gets. Um, and once, you, once you've got the darkest color here, then you're, then you're, uh, you're uh, proper experienced. Um, we can see here, oh, and the, um, the, uh, this list is organized, uh, is sorted in order of who was last in the kitchen. 
So the last shift would have been Melvin, Noli, Doris, and uh, Massimo as the, as the team leader. Um, they were the last people in the kitchen, so they're at the top of the list. These people have, uh, like Ross and Dorolyn, have done quite a few shifts. They're in dark green, but they haven't been in for maybe a couple of weeks. Um, Cornell down here has done fewer shifts um, and hasn't been in for maybe three or four weeks. Okay. Down at the bottom, the people in white haven't yet done any shifts. They've they've, they answered, yes, I'm interested in cooking when they registered, but they, uh, their shift count is zero so far. And they're, they're all this long list, and, and uh, there, there are more below, um, of people who haven't yet done a shift. Um, over here, we've got the team leader shift count. So we can see Massimo has done um, six team leader shifts and possibly even more uh, not as team leader. Concordia has pale green, so she hasn't done many shifts, but she's already done two as a team leader. So she's probably someone who's directed a kitchen before who knows what she's doing. Um, Katrine and Maureen here um, have done lots of shifts, but never been team leader. Um, and, and so on and so on. So we, we, we get these insights. And over here, we've got milestones. This is, this is quite cute, actually. Just uh, p uh, gives people a little yay after the shift. Um, uh, once the shift's over, dust, dust has settled, then we've got the feedback, and this went well, we, we need to work on this, and so on. Um, one of the admin team puts, the, puts out these uh, milestones. So uh, Melvin, Nolly, and Doris have just completed their first shift. It was their first shift that they just done. So that will go out on the chats. Hey, congratulations to Melvin, Nolan and Doris for your, your inaugural shift, yay. And um, five just completed. So Katrine and Maureen have just uh, done their, uh, just completed five shifts with us. Yay, thanks guys. Um, and so on, it's, just, um, it's, uh, it, it's a nice little pat on the back and um, keeps people amused and motivated, which is cool. Now, sometimes the rotor doesn't look as full as the one that I showed you a moment ago. Um, sometimes like when the undergraduates on whom we were depending suddenly all leave town on the same day and our participation drops off a cliff. And we're like, ah, we've got 180 portions of food to cook and we've got one person on the rotor. Oh God, what are we gonna do? Uh, help? So we got functions for that. So what happens is um, uh, th that that did happen. We uh, we learnt to spread the load between university students and uh, city residents. And when the students are here, it's brilliant, young, and full of energy, and, and and oh, I've got an essay to write. I can't come. There is that as well. But we also have lots of people who live in Cambridge who are here all the year round and are very useful during the university holidays. Um, if we need uh, if we need to fill gaps. On the rotor, we can uh, put a, put a call out in the in the chat groups. Hey, we need to still need three more delivery riders or another cook for tomorrow. Anybody, anybody free? Anybody fancy it? Try that a couple of times. If that doesn't work, um, we can maybe contact a few people directly, just just personally, and say, hey, you know, um, you know, it was good to see you a couple of weeks ago when you were in. Do you fancy doing another cooking shift tomorrow? We need somebody. If we're getting a bit desperate and um, we've got gaps to fill and the hours are ticking away and nothing's happening, then we bring in the big guns. We tick some boxes down the side here. I chose here to do Ros and Doralyn because they're experienced. They've got dark green here. They know what they're doing. They ha um, I've scrolled down a bit. I've not asked the people right at the top of the list because they've just been in. It's not really fair to pester them again. But Ros and Doralyn haven't been in for a couple of weeks. They've done quite a few shifts. They're, they're keen, they're motivated. There's a good chance that one of these will want to do it. But I'll also include half a dozen newcomers who haven't yet done a shift. And um, uh, it, it's a nice way to uh, just make contact and say, hey, you, you, you said you're interested in some, in some cooking. We haven't seen you yet. Are you free tomorrow? That would be cool if you could help us out then. Um, we tick the boxes. We've got eight ticked here, it says. And uh, again, from our extra little menu that, uh, that I've added to the, to the uh, spreadsheet at the top, we have a send SMS menu and it says text selected people to ask for their help. Uh, click go. And that's it. It comes back and says, do you want to send SMS messages? You're about to send text messages to Ros, Dorian, Lucky, Maro, Sibel about doing a shift today. It's in a couple of hours. Sending these eight texts will cost roughly 21p. There's the answer to the earlier question. So yes, I was right with 2.7, 2.8 pence. There we go. Um, okay, do you go ahead. And you click yes. 
and the messages go out. Um, the, this column here, last asked for help, gets updated to show that on the 27th of January, just now, I asked Roz and Dorlin and these six people down here if they could help tomorrow. So we won't hassle them again for a little while. If I need to do this again on Sunday, because we still need more people for Sunday shift and, we, and the, the road's not full, I'll choose people that haven't just had a message today. Um, I would probably choose a few of these who we haven't hassled for a long time and scroll down the list at the bottom here um, to, to get, oh, ah, that was wrong, sorry. Let's do that again. Here we go. To um to get the uh, to get to involve more people. So these text messages go out, and the wording changes a little bit. So it feels like a personal message. Um, uh, hey, Dorlin, we need another volunteer for a cooking shift from three p.m. today. Please let us know if you're available to step in. If we're doing this on a Wednesday, it will say from three p.m. tomorrow, because CCK runs on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. If we do this on a Friday. It will say from 3 p.m. on Sunday. That just gets scripted automatically. It all just happens. The, the minimal inputs that's required from the admin person looking for helpers is simply tick some people, go. And the script I've written um, put the wording together depending on what day it is. And um, this list in the back that you see in the background, this list that we're looking at is the cooks list. So the texts that go out say we're short of a cooking volunteer. If we were looking at the deliverers list and we did the same thing, the text that goes out would say, hey, we're looking for delivery volunteers for a shift 3 p.m. today, tomorrow, on Sunday, whatever. So um, the, the wording gets tweaked depending on what we're sending, but it's not uh, the, the admin person who's operating it doesn't need to do all that. It just happens. So these texts get sent to the, to the relevant people. Um, it goes out on Twitter as well. If we've got to the stage of using this function, it means we do need the help kind of urgently. So it goes out on Twitter as well. Excuse me. Um, hey, could you fill a gap in our rotor for a? Oh, this is a delivery one, but yeah. Um, uh, from 6 p.m. today, no experience necessary, just a quick induction video. You'll need your own transport, bike, car, space hopper. Nobody's taken us up on that last one. That that would be cool. We we need a photo of that so, for the social. Anyway, um, tweet us back if you can help. There we go. So um, yeah, all of that just happens um, automatically. Again, minimal input for maximum output but hopefully without it feeling too impersonal from the volunteers point of view um it, it feels like a personal message um uh, and and apparently reasonably convincingly because we do get messages back saying oh really sorry i can't oh i'm out of town oh, I'm, oh i've got an essay to write um and so you know people people very often reply to these very often say no of course but usually we do manage to fill the uh, the um fill the rotors one way or another there we go and we are just about at the end of what i have prepared to say so um yay any more questions and discussion yeah Fire there away. are a few questions um oh cool. someone's at my door i'll just tell you who's going next so i think i'm gonna go cool. greg and then lindsay because you haven't spoken yet so after greg i'd like you to talk about this extra pasta that you've received and then after that <laughs> naomi and I'm just going to get my door, but carry on. Mysterious. Okay. Uh, I think great. Mark had some questions before me. No? His question wrong. has been answered. Okay. He did, but it's been answered. Ah. So, so was it? Uh, you've great. you've kind of answered it, but what happens if you get like one person sign up after all of those steps? Do you still run? Yeah. Uh, um. Uh. I think I'm right in saying we have never cancelled a session because of lack no, of personnel no. um i do remember one occasion where it got to half past two and we just had nobody on the rotor uh, no no firm promises for a shift that was due to start at three and at that point um i i thought right i uh, mentally without without discussing it without without um having a, a discussion about it and making a decision together i was basically convinced myself this is this is just not happening today with there is no way we're going to cook today and so i um i started talking to some supermarket managers that i know that i've met through uh, picking up 
food for CCK for other projects. Um, phoned a couple of those that hey, we're, we're stuck today, we're not going to be able to do the session. Can you help us? Can we get some microwave meals? Can we get something that we can deliver to people who are not going to have food tonight? That won't be everybody. Not everybody totally depends on, uh, on the delivery like that. But um, I was I was in the middle of calling in the backup plan when it transpired that people were actually starting to cook and um, it, it came out of the woodwork and, and it came together and food was uh, food was cooked and delivered. Um, the fact that we're based at the lock on at the at the squat where there are a number of people living. The number varies uh, quite uh, quite widely um, from week to week. I think I've never actually lived there, so I, uh, other people could talk about this um, more. Uh, um, oh, other people talk about this more uh, more in a more informed way than me. But um, there are always people living at the lock-on where we have our where we have the kitchen. Um, it, it's their kitchen. They host CCK. So. Um, uh, Often people who live at the lock-on are involved with uh, the community kitchen in some capacity or other. Um, sometimes a visible capacity, sometimes not. Um, and some more than others, of course. But having that bank of people there is occasionally helpful to go, guys, we're really struggling. Could somebody please just come and spend an hour chopping some carrots, please? And 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 they step up and they do, and they're cool people. Um, so uh, that's a super useful resource to have. But also just throwing out an appeal to, you know, in, into the wild going, we need help. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who follow us on Twitter and you know um, uh, follow uh, Instagram. Actually, uh, actually, we get a lot of contact from Instagram. Uh, we've got Facebook as well. And then um, just just by kind of shouting, it's urgent. We're not going to get food out today if somebody doesn't come and help. And a couple of people rock up and we get the food ready. Yay! So yeah, I think I'm right in saying we have never had to cancel a session due to lack of. Uh, we come close, <laughs> but uh, never actually cancelled due to uh, lack of people. Um, occasionally somebody doesn't turn up, so we f f fill the gap and, you know, uh, muddle through somehow or other. But yeah, it works. Oh, she's great. Thank you. Um, and then was it going to be Lindsay, I think? Yes, that's right. Go ahead, Lindsay. Tell us what happened with oh, the pasta. You're back. Oh, my God, the pasta. So I didn't know that, Tim, this just happened. Sorry, Oakish. Um, so I get a delivery <laughs> three times a week. Um, I started off getting deliveries and then I kind of got a little bit more involved. Um, not massively, I've cooked once and I kind of tend to rock up at these th these kind of things and meetings and whatnot and put my two peas worth in. Um, but yeah, so I had a delivery tonight and I just happened to mention to the to the rider if, if she had any, um, any spares. Didn't honestly think she would because I think I'm not the last on the route. So I said, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Anyway, yeah, half an hour later, 20 minutes later, another rider rocks up with another portion, which I've just uh, finished. <laughs> <laughs> so win, win. So, uh, but I have got no idea how that happened. Um, obviously, they have a way all the riders communicate. Would that be a different signal group, Tim? Um, honestly, I I'm not sure how that happened, but pr I would expect that would be in the in the uh, CCK deliveries group, which I think you're in. But no, um, no, you're not not. In that. no oh, that, yeah, it'll be in there then. Yeah, there's a, a group on we use Signal as uh, as our chat platform for for everything, and there's a CCK deliveries group, and um, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday it activates. Um, it comes to life. Uh, there's a there's a message that goes out says, okay, today we're expecting da, 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 these people uh, to do these routes. Uh, bike 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 car bike bike car car bike um uh gives a thumbs up uh, to, to show you've seen the message and that you're coming that's cool today we're based at the church not at the lock-on because of covid um and um and then yeah all sorts of chat about okay what time's the food gonna be ready oh a little bit late today don't come till half past six okay uh right i've arrived i'm waiting outside cool we'll get your bag ready now you know all that kind of thing and then while people are out delivering oh um james on the chesterton route wasn't in tonight but i'm not sure where to leave the food what should we do oh yeah i know that place yeah yeah to put it put it you know behind the behind whatever um 
so chat about just getting the job done so presumably um i'll, I'll be able to look in a bit but um presumably the first the first person who called to call at your place tonight has put a message on the chat saying hey if anybody's near here and has got a spare portion for Lindsay, she'd appreciate it and um and then someone else has gone oh you know what thingy wasn't in so i've got this shall we yeah and uh I'm guessing, but uh, I think that's I'll what find, happened actually. Yeah, because I'll he find said, out. I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah, he said that the um, the the second rider said that there wasn't um, that someone didn't want their portion, all of the portion. Right. So right. Cool. yeah, more for me. Yay! Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Bonus pasta for this. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Uh, Naomi next. Naomi. Yeah, but my one of my questions, Greg's asked it, so that's fine. Cool. Um, Honest answer to this one, how much time do you personally spend a week <laughs> on this? And how big is your admin team? And roughly how many hours do, does the admin team volunteers put in? Good question. Um, we actually had a meeting this week about... Um, uh, about this, about uh, about burnout, <laughs> about um, the about the size of the admin team and the and the really rather large number of hours that uh, that too small a number of people put in. Um, I'm one of those people. There are a couple of others uh, who who are on it pretty much every day, um, and um, uh, it's not a full time job. Um, you know, I, I, I do work as well. I do all the voluntary stuff as well. But um, uh, yeah, it does take up quite a chunk of, of my time. Um, and a lot of the work that I do is not particularly time relevant. Um, if I have to drop everything and go out for two hours, I can do that um, and just do whatever I need to do later. Um, so uh, I'm very, very flexible in terms of availability to to jump in and do a delivery round when somebody, uh, when, uh, when there's nobody to do it. Or um, at the moment, while we're working from a place that's not our normal base, that necessarily involves extra admin and extra logistics because uh, uh, all the stuff that we need arrives at the lock-on. You know, the, the donations of food arrive at the lock-on, but then every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, we need it to be at a church across town. So that's got to happen. And, um, and just taking care of, uh, are we locking up the church tonight? Is there another group you know uh, all, all, all of that is, you know, is all extra admin so it is a bit uh busier than usual at the minute actual hours a week honestly i i, I don't know i don't know it's a not, lot uh, yes. it is a lot i mean it's obvious it's a lot so yeah. it's just just to try and get a sense of uh you know how, how many there's a lot of stuff that's been solved by technology mm. but i'm trying to get a sense as someone who's not particularly techie yeah. a sense of how much behind it how much mm. manual stuff and how, and how many hours of you know people are put in well and, and the, also how roughly how many are in the, the admin team you said a few the admin team okay there are um uh the team is ill-defined <laughs> um yeah just, it's a, you know uh, there are um <laughs> at least half a dozen people who are frequently active doing different roles that I can immediately think of probably two or three more that I've forgotten um and other people who show up from time to time and go what can I do and we say oh there's a, could you phone these six people and ask them this you know um so just single tasks like that um uh but yeah regularly in the uh, regularly active and contributing in the in the admin group the cck admin group on signal um at least half a dozen and um yeah probably seven or eight uh regular contributors and so presumably that part of what they do is when they're when issues are flagged up you're the solvers you're the, the admin team are the ones that pick up either flag them up or solve them when they're yeah yeah i suppose so yeah yeah is that, um, is that part of what they would do um like like not having enough people admin, on a shift for instance uh, it's problems like that yes yeah that yeah. that comes that that's the admin team who are gonna uh, who are gonna solve that one way or another um and that's great. um uh, I, I should i should probably stress that the admin team are not uh, we're, we're not in charge. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm... <laughs> uh, so, um, so problems like we've got a rotor to fill. Yes, okay, we're going to work on that. But bigger problems that might come up, uh, we're we're not the the, uh, the the crew who solve them. No, you know, it's, uh, we take input from anybody, everybody. Yeah, it, it, it's just yeah, to try and get it doesn't not so much who, but like 
the hours involved, really, I guess. And, and the, yeah, um, the work. I, um, I'll, I'll go you, with you've your... Done, you've done that. That's I'll fine. go with your estimate of a lot. Yeah, yeah the, um, that's, the... what, that's <laughs> fine. That's all I need. Sorry, um, um, and my just, other just question bit, was... Actually, sorry, just a, um, a, a, a slightly fuller answer to that question. Um, previously kind of in oh yeah over the last year not so much in the last few months but over the previous year i spent an awful lot of time um regularly until late at night programming all the stuff that i've just been demonstrating yeah. um and that now exists and that's kind of why i'm here i would yeah. you know it's really useful for us i'm sure some of it could be useful for other people and i'd be happy yeah, to yeah, help yeah. other people deploy similar things uh, on, uh, for, yeah, yeah. for their projects um the chances that what we've got here would be useful as it is for somebody else in another town to be honest are pretty small it's so specific to what we do uh, it's probably you know having a copy of the system you can have it if you want but it probably won't suit exactly what you want but there'll be functions in there that i could show you how they work i could maybe even write for you or talk to a techie friend of yours and say hey look it does it works like this and can you do it for them and then you know um i'd be happy to have that sort of conversation yeah that's that's great my uh, my other question was um very quickly have, have you um have you done any research about who's taking up, who's receiving food and what sort of people and who? And um, have you research, been able to do that? Uh, research, no, not a lot that I'm aware of. Um, uh, I love the idea of research happening uh, about food projects like this. And that's one of the reasons that, that I think NFS is, is cool and useful and, and uh, doing a good thing. I personally um, know very little about even how to do that kind of research, or I, I wouldn't know how to help, how to, you know, how, certainly not how to organize it, even how to help. It's not my thing. So I love seeing it happen, but it's not, it's not something that I've been involved in at all. And I'm not aware that a great deal has been done uh, in terms of research uh, uh, with CCK. Um, we'd, be, we'd be open for that. We'd be up for it. We're in Cambridge. It's not like we're short of, you know, of students with, with projects to do. But um, yeah, um, I'm not aware that we've had a great deal of, of uh, research uh, we've had of a, that nature. We've had, a couple, um, we've had a couple of requests. Um, there was someone recently, and I, yeah, I can't remember who picked it up and who got back to them, but mm. yeah, someone said they would. So, but that was early, that was really just to see how it was all working. And I, I can't actually know, I can't remember, there's no point me saying. So. Okay. No, do you know what I was going to ask you actually, Lindsay? Because uh, that, that that is something you know a little bit more about. Uh, you, you you would potentially be a little bit more involved in than I would. Um, but uh, if you don't know, um, either. <laughs> well, I just think it's a really good idea because mm. one to yeah. then it gives us an opportunity to see what we're doing from a different angle, from a more academic angle, and yeah. maybe give people an idea of as well as ourselves because this has been really informative for me um because i sometimes i'm like how the hell does all this happen uh we do so much and it seems that there's quite a few people not that many people doing it mm. but yeah i think tim's yeah you've done a really good job tim um of everything and you're wonderful and on that note i'm gonna go <laughs> Cheers, <Lynn. laughs> right mate see you soon <laughs> see you soon and, cool. and just linked to the research thing was how many people had to the not it wasn't academic research i just wondered whether you knew who was who were who were recipients really how many people are paying and how many people are are not just roughly do you do you have an idea of that sort of Pay, paying for the food or, yeah did you do contribute what oh right i thought Lindsay said to me that she um, does she, uh, she said she contributes right. into uh, she uh, in, but in terms of time uh, she, right, so it's free uh, for everybody okay yeah the, uh, the, there's no some people do choose to donate as well as receive food some people choose to uh, give some time and receive food yeah, yeah. um lots of people just receive the food and that's fine um we uh, we th there's no um there's no question of how much yeah, you'd yeah. like to pay for this how much you know you, you, yeah. you get the food and, uh, and we'll talk about the rest after, you know, but uh, if you if you ask for the food, you get the food. That's it. Um, cool. Um, the uh, I mentioned at the beginning, we've got no legal structure. We're not a charity. Uh, we're not a CIC, none of these things. Um, it, it doesn't actually exist. Yeah. Um, what we have is um, opencollective.com, which you might be familiar with, um, where um, th uh, they have a legal structure which they lend to community groups. Um, so our uh, all 
our budgeting, all the money that we have is based with them and is all uh, visible online. You can see uh, how much money has been donated, how much we have in the pot at the moment, what expenses people have claimed for different things. Um, and you can see all that. It's out in the open. Uh, that's at opencollective.com slash Kimish Community Kitchen, I think. So uh, um, if you go to ccKitchen.uk to our website and click the donate button, um, then you'll be on Open Collective and you'll be able to explore there, see our budget and so on. There we go. Um, any more questions? It's all got quiet. Just make sure we've all got your email address. Or yeah, yeah, right. That That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, assuming this recording has gone well, which it looks like it has, um, I'm hoping to put this on the NFS website somewhere so that it can be there whenever you need to check back. Cool. Um, and I'll um, email it in the digital digest and things. People yay, thank you. Cool. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about the delivery app here, um, you can use that again. Uh, you uh, have a play with that, show it to people, um, uh, demo.cckitchen.uk. It'll, um, it will ask you for a passcode, but the passcode is just D-E-M-O, and you'll get a fake list of people who don't live in Cambridge, but uh, you'll be able to use the app and see, see how it works. The link that we used tonight um, was also actually uh, fake data, fictional data. Those people don't exist either. But that link that we use tonight will stop working tomorrow morning. I mentioned right at the beginning that data security, data protection were, was uh, kind of built into this. So when a, when a delivery rider scans their code or they get their list, they see the seven, eight, nine names and addresses that they're delivering to tonight, but they give the piece of paper back at the end of the evening and the link that they had that showed them that stops working the following morning. There's a passcode included in the link which changes after each session. So um, that's about as tight as it can get, you know, if somebody's delivering to a person they need to know where they live you can't you can't not tell them that but the the access to the information is removed uh, the following day and, um, and so it's, it's it's fairly tight in terms of data protection gdpr it's cool. there we go um i know that alongside this talk there's a document that has all the details um how can people get a copy of that Oh, good thought. Um, I could put something in the chat, actually. I'll tell you what, if I stop that. Um, oh, look, I can see myself. Um, right, I'm going to grab um, a couple of... In fact, I'd love to put um, this recording, the slides, and that document all on the NFS website for people to access. Is that all cool. right? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd, That'd be good. awesome. Um, here we go. Let's and I'll see. share it in our digital digest. And... Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, it see, oh, it's um, hang on, there's a short link to it. I just need to remember it. Uh, um, yay, that's the one. Let me just check. Yes, this is it. So, this is uh, uh I'm going to paste it in the chat a link to our um admin manual. This describe describes most of what I've just said, um, but goes into more detail about exactly what to click on, where to, to, to do different things. Um, so uh, the, the, the intended reader for the, for the admin manual there is somebody who's sitting in front of our system and needs to process a new, uh, a, a new request for food or needs to send some text messages, whatever it is. And so there's step-by-step -step things in there. Cool, Naomi. Nice to see you. Thank you. So, um, I'm happy like, to stick around yeah. for a little while, but um, yeah, uh, uh, go on, Louise. I was, yeah, I was going to summarize. As you're summarizing, it looks like we've reached the end. Um, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you. Um, this Welcome. has been mm -hmm. so incredible. It's wonderful to see what you've done. And thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. I feel like this is what NFS is all about, um, which is really Yay. exciting. <laughs> when it works it's really good it's lovely go. sometimes i'm like on my own up. writing the digest like does anyone read this <laughs> but i'm not it's happening it's really good um excellent cool. fab. yes and a shout out if anyone of you out there is from a food or food related project and has um something cool that you want to share get in touch email info at nationalfoodservice.uk and I can help you set up a similar training. Doesn't have to be via Zoom, can be in resource format, however you want to do it. 
Um, and equally, if you have a question, if you have a problem in your organization that you can't solve, then email me that as well. And I'll connect you with someone who has solved it. And then there we are. That's, that's, the, that's the dream. Um, yeah, cool. And I think that's it from me, yeah. So thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, uh, ping me an email if you have any questions. Um, I'll be happy to help you do similar things with your thing. There we go. <laughs> right. Fabulous. All right, then. Um, goodbye, I guess. <laughs> Enjoy the yeah, rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. See you again soon. Very Ciao. informative talk. Lovely to see you. Cheers.